Welcome to Emperor John Wayne's Freaky Flex. I am your host with the most Emperor John Wayne Frankenstein. Though today we're going to leave behind the vaults of schlock and horror and venture into the great wild west where I get to assume my identity is the Duke John Wayne Striker. And just for the record, that is my actual God-given name on this planet. You see, my father, his name was Wayne, but he was also the biggest John Wayne fan on the planet. So he decided to name me after both himself and his hero, the Duke, John Wayne. But, of course, John Wayne is just one word, no H, to make it a little different and to make me the unique person I am myself. Of course, we all know that every time period, every place in the multiverse has a John Wayne that's infested with the John Wayne force and the John Wayne group mind that knows and watches you mortals with omnipotent knowledge of what's going on behind the scenes, sometimes helping, sometimes watching, always there ready judging and there to be the epic hero and do epic John Wayne stuff well you already know a little bit about the movie today it's a classic western starring John Wayne and let's face it back in the days the western was the equivalent to what we would call our superhero or action adventure movies today I mean, they, just like the superhero movies of today, the Westerns had these bigger-than-life characters with abilities that far succeeded that of your normal mortal men that would go and put their lives on the line to fight the forces of darkness and evil. But back then they had a pistol and the code of the West versus superpowers and the codes of the hero. But in any case, I've already gave you a lot of spoilers, so it's time for my lovely crow hostess, Necrosha, to tell you about the film. If you please, Necrosha. Absolutely. Howdy, mortals, and Necrosha, your ghoul hostess for tonight's cinematic radio. We're saddling up for a wild ride with John Wayne in the 1963 Western comedy classic Talk based on Shakespeare's The Taming of the Shrew, this technicolor treasure brings together the Duke himself, John Wayne, and the fiery Maureen O'Hara in a battle of wits, love, and laughter. So grab your cowboy boots and let's ride into the sunset with McClintock. Now back to you, my emperor. There you have it, McClintock. A really great movie. And not only is it a Western movie starring our hero John Wayne, coincidentally co starring his actual son. It also is Shakespeare, modernized Shakespearean play. Not only are you experiencing the culture of the Great Wild West, you're also getting Shakespearean culture too! That's two for one! Wow! Such education, such culture, such amazing videos, pure, classic, cult mania. And with that, let us roll it!
the bees and the flowers and the trees till you're up to your knees in love. There are roses on the trellis and the scent of new mown hay. The clinging vine is jealous on the fence across the way. There's a great big yellow moon above and a breeze to sing the song. Between the roses and the yellow moon, a fella can't go wrong when he makes love in the country. Where stars are blue, all you be dreaming of are the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees till you're up to your knees in love. Drago. Morning, Curly. Make seven times this month he come home swoggled. Six. Seven? Six. Once was his birthday. That don't count. Give me my bucket. Didn't have anything for breakfast but two raw eggs and a mug of honey. No. Curly. Yes, boss. Don't say it's a fine morning or I'll shoot you. Well, good morning to you, too, Get sir. Get out of here, Bunyan. Good morning. Morning. Carlos, what are you doing up there? I hope I get it this time, Mr. McClintock. My brother, they got the big hats already. All right, let them have at it. Get over. Did you only me drive? You promised me you would sometime. No, yeah. yeah. Boss, you better watch that turn on the road. Yeah. You're gonna kill both of us one of these days. There's one old pensioner I wish you'd pass out. Bunny? Yeah. I knew where I'd seen his face before. He ain't an old timer. He's just been around town a couple of years. Oh, you have no milk of human kindness. Morning, Mr. McClinic. Morning, Bunny. Well, I can see you're in good health. Never felt better. Contrary to what you may hear. 
My kidneys ain't what they used to be, and my liver's been leaving me busy. Gray gone? Yeah. Hello, Ben. Hey, McClinic. They go throw that in the buggy. Yes, sir. The scrubby bunch of Sooners, huh? They are at that. But it ought to make Douglas happy, lining his pockets with land fees. What are we gonna do? I don't know what you're gonna do, Ben. Me, I do nothing. 200 families, quarter of beef, a week for family? They last two years. That can be a sizable number. I got 20 head to one of any other brand on the Mesa Verde. I'm not hollering. Some of us haven't got all the money in the world. Some of us ain't old and, and tired and feel like being put upon. You interest me, young Ben. Go on. So the first time I find one of our hides wearing our brand hung on one of them settler's fences, I aim to kill me a plowboy. You do what you want, McClinic. We'll do what we want. Fellas my age generally call me G.W. or McClinic. Youngsters call me Mr. McClinic. All right, Mr. McClinic. Not because I'm afraid of you. You're the big he stud of this country. And I reckon a fella my age should call you Mr. Full grown now, G.W. He's a half owner of the spread. I made him a full partner the day the doc gave me the long face. Well, you want him to vote the first time this territory becomes a state, don't you? Of course I do. These settlers get burned out, there'll be a lot of hollering that this country's too wild to be a state. We'll go on being a territory some more, with a lot of political appointees running it according to what they learned in some college where they think that cows are something you milk. Indians are something in front of a cigar store. <laughs> I'm looking to you to hold young Ben down. I'll do what I can. Come on over to the house once in a while. We'll rack up a few hands of stud. Gee, that'll be just fine. Hey, 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 hey. It's a nice morning, ain't it, boss? Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. <laughs> like that again, eh? <laughs> Here's that little cheer, yes. About a thousand head. I figure they'll bring about 1250. They're not as fat as I'd like to ship. They all off the North Range? Yes. Settlers. Every one of them with a plow and a Bible. Not the slightest idea what the range is for. Drago! Drag out that hog leg. Yes, sir. Give me some attention. Yes, sir. The government give us each 160 acres. The government never gave anybody anything. Some years back, a lot like you came in. You had a pretty good first year, good summer, easy winter. But the next year, the last rain was in February. And by June, even the jackrabbits had sense enough to get off the mesa. Folks, do you know who that is? That's McClintock. George Washington McClintock. I told him that, Douglas. He controls the water rights on 200 square miles of rain. You know that lumber you got? It came from his land. Cut by his loggers and milled in his mill. Douglas, I come close to killing you a couple of times when we were younger. Saddens me I didn't. Can you imagine a man who owns all that? Oh, and mine too. I forgot to mention that. All that. And he's begrudging poor people a measly, a measly 160 acres. That right, Miss McClinic? You begrudge us a little free land? There's no such thing as free land. You make these homesteads go, you'll have earned every acre of it. 
but you just can't make them go on the Mesa Verde. God made that country for buffalo. Serves pretty well for cattle, but it hates the plow. And even the government should know that you can't farm 6,000 feet above sea level. Any trouble, Mr. McClinic? No trouble, Jeff. How about you, Douglas? Douglas? Just plain Douglas, eh? And you call him Mr. McClinic. Why? Well, Douglas, I guess it's because he earned it. Mr. McClinic? Yeah? I'm a good hand with cattle, Mr. McClinic. I'd like a job. Well, you look strong enough. You come in with those suitors? Well, yes, sir, but we don't have a homestead. Can't and... use you. cigars and 12 of those hats for you over there. Them bell big hats ain't gonna last long the way some folks have been dipping into that red eye these days. Uh -oh. Good morning, G.W. Good morning. I sold some sick candy. Please help yourself. Come on. Davey, you can forget about saddling up the horse. Come in here. Problem? Yeah. Well, if I were black, I'd move Queen Bishop. King Four. Yeah, you might be right. You know, I was just starting to work this out when the letter came. Letter? Was, what happened? Don't you want it? Morning, Mr. McClintock. Morning, Davy. You being here saved me a trip. Oh, that hat and suit of clothes you picked out for my birthday? Well, instead of this cowboy hat, I'd like to have this one. If it's uh, all right with you, sir. I hope it's all right with me, Davy. Of course, that looks like the kind of a hat a fellow I'd wear down Main Street to start a fight. Oh, I don't need a city hat for that. All I have to do is walk down the street and some wiseacre will call me an Indian and just like that, the fight's on. Davy, the letter is for you. And you mm -hmm. are an Indian. Yes, I know I'm an Indian. But I'm also the fastest runner in town. I've got a college education and I'm the railroad telegrapher. But does anybody say, hello, college man, or hello, runner, or hello, telegrapher? No. Not even hello, not him. Davy, it's always let the Indian do Will it. Will you go out in the store and help the ladies? All right. I'm also a bookkeeper, part time clerk. <laughs> always let the Indian do it. The lady brought that out here this morning, asked for it to be taken out to the home ranch for you. Handsome lady, kind of tall with red hair. Called me Mr. Birnbaum, just as if she'd never seen me before. And as if that veil that covered her face would keep me from recognizing her. I thought she was in New York or in Europe or someplace. So did I. Jake, you better throw on a couple of extra cases of the boss's favorite bourbon. That stuff sure gets used up fast out of our place. Which reminds me, you better start tapering off. Huh. Catherine's in town. Katie? <laughs> Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, Good morning, Good morning, Good morning, Good morning, 
doing in here? Why aren't you out at the desk? Helping out the bartender. Yeah, I see a busy day. Give me the key to room 17. What? 17, and don't advertise it. Here they come, Mr. McClenny. That am I. Beer. Whiskey. Day off? Off day. Wonder what he's so preoccupied about. Haven't you heard? No. What? Katie's back in town. Katie? Yes, dear. The social arbiter. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi, Sonny. Good morning. Oh. <laughs> Mr. McClinic, I don't want to bother you. I'm sorry, boy. I told you, no job. your plans. But you feel kind of silly. I never feel silly. It's because you have no sense of humor. Why couldn't we sit down in the hotel dining room and talk about whatever it is you want to talk about? Or why couldn't you just come over to the house? And have everybody know that we're meeting. Everybody knows. And what's the difference? We're married. That is something I should like to change. You know the answer, Kate. That isn't why you sent for me. Let's get to the rat killing. Oh, that's just the kind of remark that's always endeared you to me. Let us open the discussion. Very well. Our daughter is coming home in a few days. Rather, she's coming here. It was just a slip of the tongue that made me refer to this ugly hamlet as home. Our daughter. Is it so hard to say her name? It's Becky. Rebecca! I hate that name. Anyway, she's coming home. And I hope to persuade you to let her live with me. Part of the time in the capital, part of the time in New York, and, of course, Newport during the season. You're whistling in the wind, Katie. If she stays here, you become just as crude and as vulgar as all of this country. And if she goes your way, she'll be all show and no stay. No go, Kate. I hate you. Oh, how I hate you. Half the people in the world are women. Why does it have to be you that stirs it? That's the story. I saw your picture in the paper at the governor's ball. You were dancing with a governor. At least he's a gentleman. I doubt that. You have to be a man first before you're a gentleman. He misses on both counts. Hey, Sonny. You gonna ask him again? Nope. Hey, boy. You got a pocket of pride. You got a big. You better listen to an expert, sonny. I'm telling you, you got to grovel. Human nature gets him every time. Mister, leave me alone. Everybody does it one way or another. <laughs> Oh, 
About that job, Mr. McClain. I already told you, son, I've got no need for farmers or use for them. Just one minute, Mr. McClinic. My father died last month. That's how come we lost our homestead. I've got a mother and a little sister to feed. I need that job badly. What's your name? Devlin Warren. Well, you got a job, son. See my home ranch foreman. He's over at the corral. <laughs> Step down off of that carriage, mister. Oh, that hog leg. I've been punched many a time in my life, but never for hiring anybody. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to say. Never begged before. Turn my stomach. I suppose I should have been grateful you gave me the job. Gave? Boy, you got it all wrong. I don't give jobs, I hire men. You intend to give this man a full day's work, don't you, boy? You mean you're still hiring me, Mr. McClendon? Well, yes, sir. I mean, I'll certainly deliver a fair day's work. For that, I'll pay you a fair day's wage. You won't give me anything, and I won't give you anything. We both hold up our heads. Where do you live? The settler's encampment, down by the mine. That's your plug? Yes, sir. Well, hop on him and we'll go get your gear. Yeah! of this new land will be your new home. Oh, uh, 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 Jones and McAllister, since you've been more or less the leaders of our group, I'd like to have you come up and uh, uh, check the exact location. Hold me a minute, sir. Go after that boy and give him $30. Tell him McClintock pays his riders a month in advance. From the looks of things, they can sure use it, too. Oh, Mom? Mr. Drago. More. Well, and what do we owe this visit from the cattle baron? <laughs> I've got to touch a hangover, bureaucrat. Don't push me. Are Indians. Are there Indians in this homestead land? Friendly Indians, my boy. Oh, Maxon. Oh, running buffalo. Oh, Maxon. Long time. We we'll don't get drunk together. And it's going to be a lot longer time because it's against the law and you're with a sheriff. And if I got my hands full, they came into town to meet the train. The old Indian chiefs are coming home. I heard they'd been pardoned. They don't know when it's arriving, this week, next week, or next month. So in the meantime, I've got to do something with them. Could I cut out a couple of head of your steers to feed them? Otherwise, some of these settlers' milk cows are going to disappear. That's right, Macklin. <laughs> cut out whatever you need. Sheriff, are you going to camp these savages with all these settlers? You're asking for trouble. Mr. Douglas, I already have plenty of trouble. Please stay off my back. Run in Buffalo. Bring your people over to the clay slide. Go. Oh, Mr. Mackle. Tiny Mouse, it's nice to see you. You wouldn't believe it now, but 20 years ago, she was a mighty handsome maid. 20 years ago, you thought so too, Mr. Douglas. <laughs> it was just like this. I had a dead beat on old running buffalo, and my sharp 50 caliber misfired. 
That's back in that trouble in the forest. Remember? I remember. Hey, you won't take something to come directly from him. No. Where'd you get this? That boy's mama baked them. You thinking the same thing I am? She's a widow woman, boss, and she's got a long, hard road off. Hire her. I always said you had a heap of sense. Mr. McClinic, this is my mother. Your mother? And my sister. Pleased to meet you, Mr. McClintic. Ma'am, this is my boss, and he has a few choice words to say about your biscuits. <laughs> yes, Mr. McClintic? Well, they're great. Well, you old Ken knees reprobate, how about it? You fire me? I kill myself. I'm not talking about firing you, I'm retiring you. You've been rustling food for us for 30 years. We're gonna put you out to pasture. All you'll have to do is give advice. Be one of the family. I kill myself. I may save you the trouble. But, Ching, you kill yourself, I'll cut off your pigtail, and you ain't never gonna get to heaven. I'll be one of the family? I give you my solemn word. But you call me family. Drink too much, you get in fight. Yell all the time. Cut off his pigtail. All right, all right, I'll be one of her family. You better, you better. Bye, you better. You better, hi, hi, hi. I hope everything is satisfactory. This is such a big house, it'll take me a while to get used to things. Now, please don't hesitate to tell me if anything is wrong. No business, sir. Otherwise, it's fine. Everything are nicely. Fine. Best apple pie I ever had. Early's right, ma'am. Hated to leave that last bite. Shall we celebrate with a drink? All right. Come in and help me with the dish. Allie, you want to help too? Yes, Jacob. All right. Pitch in. Now I'll wash and you kids can dry. Is that good here? Don't seem possible one woman could use all them clothes. You keep a civil tongue in your unprepossessing face. Yes, ma'am. And unload my baggage, please. Yes, ma'am. By the way, what does that word unprepossessing mean? Miss McClintock. Oh, hello, Carlo. Run and help the driver with my luggage. I couldn't trust anyone else in this house to do anything correctly. Luggage? Give him a hand, Curly. Yes, boss. Mr. McLennan? Are you moving back in? Yes, but nothing has changed except my place of residence. And I'd be willing to put up with savages rather than be denied the company of my daughter. And I'm proving that by moving in here. Mr. McLennan, since it's my first day, would you excuse me if I, uh... Go ahead. Oh, Catherine, this is, uh, Dev Warren. Join the outfit today. Please, ma'am. Thank you. Well, how refreshing. A polite young man here. Where did he come from? He's a farmer. A farmer? Well, I'll be doggone. Kate, welcome home. What on earth are you doing in that idiotic looking outfit? <laughs> and don't you dare call me Kate. That's my buttoning suit. I'm buttoning for the boss. And I'm sorry, Catherine. That Kate kind of slipped out from the times I remembered you as being nice pe people. <laughs> you going to stand there with that stupid look on your face while the hired help insults your wife? He's just ignorant. He doesn't know any better than to tell the truth. And I can't help this stupid look. I started acquiring it as you gained in social prominence. Mrs. McClendon, where do you want I should... What? Put him in the master bedroom. <laughs> 
Yeah. But move Mr. McClintock's things into another room. Oh, the one back of the stairs would be best so that he can't wake up the entire household when he comes home every Here's night. Here's this. Just before daybreak. Yes, ma'am. Oh, excuse me. Here's your cigars, Mr. McClintock. I am Mrs. McClintock. Kate, I mean, Catherine, this is the cook. Uh, this is the lady who does the cooking for us. Mrs. Warren, Mrs. McClintock. How do you do? Very pleased to meet you, Mrs. McClintock. Very pleased. Likewise. You see, I just came to work here today, and I guess I jumped to the conclusion that this was a, a bachelor's household. <laughs> it is, and then again, it isn't. I will explain so everything will be quite clear, Mrs. Wallace. Oh, Mrs. Mrs. Warren. Warren. Mrs. Warren, it has been a bachelor's household for quite some time. And it will be again, just as soon as I am out of here, which will be as quickly as I can make arrangements to take my daughter back east with me. You see, she's coming home from school in a few days, and then we'll be off together, and you can return to conducting yourself as you consider proper in a bachelor's household. Katie! Shut up! Until then, I am mistress in this house. And I will give the orders. Oh, my letter. Are you going to say nothing, boss? No. One poached egg, tea, toast. Oh, uh, GW, as soon as my things are put away, I want to talk to you about Rebecca. Yes, Mrs. McClintock. Indeed, Mrs. McClintock. Of course, Mrs. McClintock. The toast is lightly browned and unbuttered. Of course, ma'am. Where do you think you're going? I just remembered I got a date. But she said she wanted to have a talk. I heard. Good evening, Lamb. Good evening, Mr. Mack. Yep. Hey, Mr. Mack, what does unprepossessing mean? I was called that once, Lamb. Looked it up in the dictionary. Best you don't know what it means. Uh huh. Thank you. You yeah. heard? Hey! What am I going to tell her when she asks where you went? When in doubt, tell the truth. She wouldn't expect that from you anyway. <laughs> Where's Mr. McClintock gone? There he goes, burning his last bridge. You see a yellow streak about a foot wide running up down his backbone. Well, Mr. McClintock, he ain't afraid of nothing. I once thought that. Yes, ma'am. With that, uh... He took off, lit out. I told him I wanted to talk to him. Yes, ma'am, I was standing right over here when you said it, and I was standing right out there on those front steps when he walked up the horse, grabbed a hunk of mane, stepped up on him, and sunk spur. Where did he go? Last time I saw him, he was going east. But you know him, he's liable to go north, south, or west. Get me a catch. Yes, ma'am, but... But what? Maybe you shouldn't follow him into maybe where he's going into. What does that mean? Oh, but I wish I hadn't said it. I'll just get the carriage. Yes, ma'am. What happened? The brooch. Brooch? She hit you up. She wants to go to town. But Mr. McClinic never said anything to me about it. Look, young fella, I'm the ra I'm the ramrod around this place. You better start giving me a yes, sir. You're going to get the roof of this house pulled down on your head. Yes, sir. The ramrod. Hello, lady. Hi, Mr. Clinic. No room, eh? Drink, please. Hello, honey. How is everything? Oh, fine, fine, Mr. McClinic. I'll get you next time. Be 
Max. Same as usual. Ladies. Evening, GW. Hey. Wrong move. What? Chest problem. Queen's in danger. Bottom? I'm uh, learning the game of chess. <laughs> Thought it would give me something to pass the time. See, I have nothing to do all day long. <sighs> Just remembered something. Catherine, I didn't hear you come in. I told you that I wanted to talk to you. Not now. Uh, could I get you a glass of sherry, Catherine? Oh, thank you, Mr. Birnbaum. I could use one. I came into town behind a runaway team. Uh, you'll never could handle horses. That young man whose mother pretends to be your cook. Catherine, your wife. Oh, thank you, Mr. Birnbaum. Mr. McClintock, we have an awful lot to talk over. First thing I learned about Indian fighting was to wait for daylight. What has our conversation got to do with Indian fighting? Indian fighting is good experience for our kind of conversations. Oh. It'll wait, Catherine. <laughs> Evening, Sheriff. Mr. McClintock, we had quite a ride out here. Oh, I finally got that team settled down. It's your move. No, it's your move. I just cast it. Oh. Now, look here. You're not going to sit here all night long and play chess when the matter of our daughter remains unsettled. I am going to remain here and play chess and the matter of our daughter is settled. She stays. Oh, stubborn. Catherine, your hair. Oh, oh it is a mess after that awful ride. No, no. It's just that I haven't seen you for a long time. And it seems to me the last time I saw you, your hair was a little darker, no? <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny thing the trick the man's family will play, huh? <laughs> Mr. Burnham, I think that you've completely lost your mind. You have done something to your hair. I have not! <laughs> <laughs> Had it been none of your business, I'm certainly not going to put myself in the place of the, the blondie polyps that you seem to prefer. Take it. Spell it. Oh. Morning. I must have had it all night. Clintock never quits. But a burn bomb has to. Besides, the game is over. You got me. Oh, no, Mr. Burnbaum. You still got a good game. Oh, you play chess. Please, take them. Oh, pretty good. Fair? Well, looks like I won't have to come into town always to get a game. Remember, I'm a bad loser. Your move. We suggest you let the Wookiee win. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, all right. Mm -hmm. Cup of coffee? Cosmo. I'm good. 
Good old condensed milk. That reminds me. I was cleaning out my desk the other day. I found something I wanted to return to you. Here it is. The medal. Remember? From the President of the United States of America, the First Sergeant Michael Patrick Ulule, for bravery above and beyond the call of duty. Your Papa. Reminds me of the first time I ever saw you. It was over 17 years ago. You walked into my store, not much bigger than the bundle you were carrying. And in the bundle was the most beautiful baby I ever saw. And was she hungry? <laughs> you walked all the way from Superstition Creek just to trade me that medal for a case of canned milk. G.W. was off somewhere as usual, fighting Indian. Sheriff, prepare floor. Well, so far, so good. We're, of course, watching a classic John Wayne movie, taking a short break, because, well, that's what you do when you're hosting a show. Gotta say, so far, it's great. Everything you want. Could have a little more action, I suppose. But this one, the main action is this weird power struggle between John Wayne and O'Hare. You know, the classic Taming the True stuff. Well, Necrotia, what do you got to tell our folks? Of course, as we've seen so far, McClintock is a rooting cheat in good time with John Wayne's signature charm and Maureen O'Hara's sharp wit. But what makes this film truly special is its blend of Western action and comedy, making it a standout in the genre. And let's not forget the stunning Technicolor and Panavision cinematography. It's a feast for the eyes, darlings. Now back to you, my emperor. That's right. The panoramic view. Pretty awesome. And of course, we got the Duke. You know, who's a legendary act school of acting is. Say it low and say it slow, Pilgrim. And I you know a lot of the great action stars like Kurt Russell try to emulate the Duke and do the same sort of low and slow talking that he does. And of course, lots of impersonators have impersonated the guy because it's kind of easy to pick up on that southern draw you know the whole low and slow thing but in any case let's get back to our movie roll it well have you seen the sheriff kind of early for him to try his house why did i make him fast looks like burn bonds is open maybe somebody in here knows so there you are sheriff i told you you were headed for trouble Trouble? I want to know by whose authority you let those Indians stay in town. Those savages are wards of the government, and I am the representative I of that... I told Sheriff Lord that he could put them up down to the clay side. Because the town's named after him, he thinks he owns it. Well, you check the books in the recorder's office, and you'll find I do own a fair piece of it. Hey, guard, if you knew anything about Indians, you'd know that they're doing their level best to put up with our so-called benevolent patronage in spite of the nincompoops that have been put in charge of it. Those Indians need my permission to leave the reservation. Those chiefs have been giving orders all their lives. It's pretty hard for them to understand that they have to hold up their hand like a schoolboy in a classroom. The law is very clear. I told you you'd get no satisfaction from these people. Well, we'll get the girl back. Girl? The girl the Indians kidnapped. But don't worry. I armed the settlers and set them to rounding up those red devils. What is this about a girl? Billy Jones, one of the settlers' daughters. The Indians kidnapped her. That's ridiculous. And you turned loose a lot of farmers with shotguns? I certainly did. You're insane. Let's go, Sheriff. 
Mr. Douglas. Oh, Miss McClinic. Much as I hate to agree with G.W. about anything, you haven't changed a bit. You're still an hysterical fool. I'm in the town. I got worried. What about? I thought maybe Katie shot you. Not yet, Drago, but it took restraint. Wait a minute. You better take Agar along. Not that he'll be much help. Drago, have him reward. Will you stop showing off and getting this plug in? Mercy. <laughs> Mercy. That horse is a little green. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Just where do you think you're going? Don't use that range, boss. Tone of voice with me. Carter! That is for Mr. Poor Boy's mind. Mount up some riders. Bye, boss. You heard the man. I don't like it, Mr. McClinic. I don't like it one bit. What don't you like? They're planning to hang an Indian. Yeah. Ah, hold that. Not so fast, Mr. Boss of the whole country. Unless you want to wear a big hole in your middle. How long is G.W. going to let that Cheechocker push him around? That Cheechocker has a sawed-off shotgun. How do you know she didn't wander off someplace or meet some fella or something? What are you saying? That I didn't raise my girl right? That she'd wander off all night with some man? There's a lot of things I'm not saying to you, mister. Well, you got a sawed-off shotgun in my middle. But how do you know this Indian had anything to do with it? She's gone, ain't she? She's gone. Pa! Pa, I'm over here! Pa! Been looking for me, Pa? Where you been, Del? Young Ben took me for a sunrise ride. And the horse wandered away. <laughs> you come down over there. But Telling the truth, Mr. McClinic, we wasn't doing nothing. Well, that's not important right now. The important thing is that you don't draw that hog leg, or this will be worse than Dodge City on Saturday night. Wagon. I'll tend to you later. Now for this young whippersnapper. Now, no harm has been done. And young Ben here is one of the nicest boys in the territory, so just put down that shotgun I'll and let's forget to fool with Mike. <laughs> now. We'll all calm down. Boss, he's just a little excited. I know, I know. I'm going to use good judgment. I haven't lost my temper in 40 years. But Pilgrim, you caused a lot of trouble this morning. Might have got somebody killed. And somebody ought to belt you in the mouth. But I won't. I won't. The hell I will <laughs> Matronic Rider! <laughs> I 
We used to have quite good times doing that sort of thing. <laughs> there are a lot of things we used to do. Good night. Luck. What are you talking about? I mean, divorce. She still want it? Yeah. You know, some women are funny. She fought like a wildcat on your side out there this afternoon. Come home, she slams the door in your face. That divorce business, is that what you get when you pay a woman not to live with you? That's about it. Some women I've known it'd be worth it. You know, if we had any moral character, we wouldn't be standing here covered with mud drinking when we should be washing. G.W. Drago. <laughs> Miss Warren needs biscuits. Mm. Oh, thank you, Drago. Good morning, Mrs. Warren. Good morning, Mr. McClintock. Breakfast for the boss? If that's the way you want it, Mr. McClintock. You have a black eye. I do. Ooh. Oh. Oh, and Becky's coming home today. And that's not all. There's a little something we'd better get settled. Hmm? There are no men listening now, so we can be ourselves. Oh, sure, I let you get away with all that guff the other night. But now that we're alone... When I want the opinion of the hired help, I'll ask for... You know, you could wind up with two black eyes. What? Oh, I realize you had to put on that big act. We always have to just before we get ready to forgive them. Generally for something they haven't done. But you and I both know that's just to keep them from getting the idea they uh, run things. McClinton give you that black eye? No. Nobody gave it to me. I want it. Morning, Davies. Morning, Mrs. Beach. Mr. Beach. you three of the most beautiful dresses. Becky! Oh, Uncle Draco! Oh. Did you bring your old uncle a coming home present? Sure did. What is it? A mustache cup. Oh. And what did you get me? The prettiest Philomena pony that I ever packed to sell. Broke the stand, drowned, tie in the counter. Oh. <laughs> uncle Draco! Oh. What are you doing in Mr. Douglas's tuba? Oh, Mr. Douglas has a fat... 
had a little accident. Yeah, I brought you a whole shipment of liquor and sticks. But now that I've seen how much you've grown, I think we better exchange them for a couple of bolts of dress goods, huh? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, the mayor was going to be here, but he had to go to the territorial capital on a horse theft matter. But I'm going to give his speech. Oh, and don't worry about the mayor. I'm sure that he can find a bill of sale for the horse. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to welcome the fairest... What am I doing? We are here to welcome back the prettiest girl that was ever born in McClintock or in any part of the territory. Hey, Davey! Yeah? I got something for you. The junkie told me to let him ride, so I locked him in here. I've had my scalp a long time, and I aim to keep it. And now she's come back to us. Gone are the pigtails, but the freckles are still on the prettiest face that was ever born in McClintock. Hey, that's Puma. And it's true. The government did turn them loose. Good old Puma. I'll never forget when he brought G.W. home. <laughs> Your father had a hole in his chest and a 104 fever. Of course, they weren't very manly about it. He came past the house at a high lope and threw him on the doorstep. And you do remember them good old days, don't you, Katie? Big McClintock forget, but also Blood Brother. <laughs> no, I'll never forget that. All war. Does it hurt still? I feel it when it comes on to rain. An inch higher and I wouldn't have had to worry. Ah, uh, Big McClintock, that was remembered by. We return with news. Our people have more trouble. You see, I learned good English now, Big McClintock. Learned in white man's jail. But we would have you talk our course at government hearing. I understand that Governor Humphreys is going to preside at that meeting. Yes, Puma, I'll translate your wishes. Mr. McClinic, uh, uh, could I impose on you to use your Comanche to tell these Puma people... is chief of the Comanches, and he speaks English very well. Oh, well... Your people will have to follow my instructions to the letter. It is we the law of the land... Oh, now, just a minute. Well, for heaven's sakes. Surely. Will I see you there, Bess? Of course, Davey, and you can have the first thing. Bess? <laughs> Don't want any sister of mine talking to strangers. Davey's not a stranger. He clerks in Burnbar. He's an Indian. Darn you, Drago. <laughs> Now look what you've done. Baby, this is Devlin Warren. He works for you, Papa. 
Dad, this is Miss Becky McClintic. Those are my things. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I'd have known you anywhere, Miss Becky. What do you mean? Oh, I mean, you look so much like your mother. We're even prettier. Oh, Mr. Warren. Mother's much prettier than I am. Many a fight started with words like that. Come on, get in the book. Hello, Jing. We got jelly pie for dinner. Oh. I'm not cooking. No, he's not. Junior! Yes, Miss Becky. You remember Junior Douglas, Mama? Oh, of course. How's college? Valedictorian, 95. Oh, congratulations. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Douglas, we will see you at the party, of course. Oh, delighted. Well, it'll be pretty hard to keep young man away. Oh. Yes, sir. There you go. Yes, boss. Bag is all on it. G.W., you remember young Junior? Oh, yes. Like father, like son. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. McClintock, uh, I hope you don't think I'm being presumptuous and asking for the honor of calling on Miss Rebecca. Well, there she is. Ask her yourself. Well, thank you, sir. Jean, now I'm going to get fired. Get up out of here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. How do you know me, man? you at the party, Junior? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what? Like father, like son. What do you mean, Matthew? <laughs> Come on, Jean. Grab a root and growl. Oh, I can't come with me on. I'm going to go. Go on, give me a hand. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Well, you're doing a good job, Miss McClintic. Thank you, Miss Florence. Dad, when you're finished there, go over and help Drago with the beer cakes. Yes, Mom. Could you come and help me a minute? I certainly was surprised to hear you went to college. Why? I don't know. Junior says Purdue's a good college for a backwater place like Indiana. Well, he did indeed. Oh, could you do this? I can't reach it. Why didn't you finish college? Lack of funds. My father got sick and he had to come out west. Oh, he took out a homestead. You know, your mom's sure cute. It's uh, too bad you didn't inherit her eyes. Well, you'd been lucky if you'd inherited a few things from your father. Oh, really? For instance? Just common sense, for instance. Common sense? <laughs> yeah. You don't see him being fooled by some dude like Junior Douglas. Junior's not a dude. He's nifty. This needs a woman's touch. And besides, he got a letter at college. What sport? Glee club. Very strenuous. <laughs> oh! Oh! Don't you dare hug me! Oh! I have no intention of hugging you. Oh! Party. Oh, thank you, Ben. Of course, we had to invite everybody. Just everybody. <laughs> Sorry, G.W., but this one's mine. Well, thank you, Mrs. Warren. I guess I'll have to be a good host in my own home. Well, the next one's yours, Mr. McClintic. Thank you. Go, go and do what I told you to do. Oh, Katie. 
Catherine. And do as you're told. Oh, Drago, do this. Drago, do that. Drago, we People, people, people. This Douglas fella. Drago. Yes, ma'am. Matt Douglas, Jr. is going to bring you folks some of the latest terpsichorean dance step. Brand new, brought by him directly from New York City. <laughs> All right, Mr. Fiddler. <laughs> Well, I can take care of that. sister to dance. Get up and we can do this all over again. Yes! That's enough, you fought it. It's all over. Quit butting in, Bernbaum. He's a hard man, not your son. Look, you fought him fair and square. I don't think it was so fair and square. Well, you want to take up where he left off? If I did, you wouldn't find it so easy. Now we've had enough of this. Well, when are you gonna quit walking away? Just as soon as we're out of sight of the party. A little lesson I learned back home, don't fight in front of women. Oh, well, we're out of sight now. And we are. Such vulgarity. Someone should do something about it. You're right. Absolutely right. Fighting for a country boy. Two years at Purdue, Mr. McClinic, on the boxing team. I never thought any farmer could whip me. But you sure did. They're getting cleaned up. Get him some water, Jake. Yeah. yourself cleaned up. Go ask that girl for a dance. Who? Oh! To the miss one. Oh. Where is he? I'll find him, that young whippersnapper. Trouble. Where is that farmer boy? Where is he? Where is he, G.W.? Oh, so you're the young farmer boy that whipped my nephew. Well, I'm Fonk Leroy Sage, young Ben Dump. Well, I'm no farmer, but if you're young Ben's uncle, yes, I whipped him. And you're intruding. What's intruding mean? Budding in. Oh, so he's insulting me. Well, then I got another reason for Waddleton. Besides, on account of him thrashing my nephew, young Ben. Well, Leroy, you can't get mixed up in these youngsters quarrel. Family honor. I can't have said a farmer whipped a sage. You're twice his size. Don't let that bother you, Mr. McClinic. 
Mr. Fauntleroy insists, I'll just have to teach him the same lesson. To do that, young fella. No hard feelings. Not yet. Not yet what? I mean, that isn't all. Now, wait a minute. Fauntleroy, we're gonna make this a fair fight. Of course we are. Of course we are, G.W. There'll be none of this. I wouldn't do that, G.W. You wouldn't do... No, no, I wouldn't do that. And, Dev, I don't want you kicking Fauntleroy in the knee. He didn't do no such thing. And none of this nose twisting. Ah! He's all yours. Oh. Where, where, where are my glasses? You are, right, young powder? Ouch! I'm all right. This Indian agent will stop stepping all over me. I beg your pardon. He does, yeah. You're just fighting me. But I want you to know that boy fought me a fair fight. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Fauntleroy. It's my uncle. Fauntleroy, what have you been doing? I hope my uncle didn't bother anybody. No bother. I think we'd better join the ladies before they get curious. Drago. Fauntleroy, let's line them all up for a dosey do. Jake, you think tincture of arnica would help? Could be. Used to help you. Gentlemen, to the medicine cabinet. <laughs> All right. Well, this movie's a little longer than most of them, so we get to take an extra break. Gotta say, I gotta love the Duke. All right, Necrotia, why don't you uh, tell us what you're thinking? Completely ready. Now I know what you're thinking, mortals. What about the Shakespearean inspiration? Ah, uh, yes, the taming of the shrew's influence is evident in the banter between McClintock and his estranged wife, Catherine. It's a delicious game of cat and mouse, with neither party willing to give in. And that chemistry between John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara, absolutely electric. Now back to my emperor. Well, thank you very much. I guess we got to get back to the show to see what happens next. I'm sure a lot more trouble's brewing. So why don't you roll it? Well, it looks like she got herself a little something. Good morning, Vega. Good morning, Davey. You seen Daddy? You've both heard of this morning from the Scattergun movies, huh? When, huh? Afternoon. I'll get you out so early. It's something I have to get straight in my mind. Yeah? What? Mama. Why'd you and Mama stop living together, Daddy? Why'd you separate? Aren't you gonna answer me? No. It's sort of my business, I think. I don't. Is it another woman? Usually is. At your age, you always know what's usual. Is it Mrs. Warren? Becky, I don't want to start laying the law down your first day back home. But I'll have no more such talk. First time I ever saw Mrs. Warren was last week. She has a job here at which she's very good. And I hope you'll have the good manners to not pry into other people's business. 
Your mother's and mine. Pretty good shot, Daddy. Oh, I can understand your trouble. Mama's often so, well, so petulant. Petulant? You yes. learned a lot of words back east, Becky. Wish to God they'd have taught you some meaning. You were only about six months old when your mother stayed alone with you in the sod hut under eight foot of snow while I moved to her 300 miles south to try and save it. Saved about half of it. You were a little more than a year old at the time of the great Comanche raids. We stood off 500 Plains Indians for nine days. Petulant, Becky? I think you better go on home. See that Ching gets those birds. Becky! Come here. Something I ought to tell you. Yes, now's as good a time as any. You're gonna have every young buck west of the Missouri around here trying to marry you. Mostly because you're a handsome filly. But partly because I own everything in this country from here to there. They'll think you're gonna inherit it. Well, you're not. I'm gonna leave most of it to... Well, to the nation, really. For a park. Or no lumberman will cut down all the trees for houses with leaky roofs. Nobody will kill all the beaver for hats for dudes. Nor murder the buffalo for robes. What I'm going to give you is a 500 cow spread on the upper Green River. Now, that may not seem like much. But it's more than we had, your mother and I. Some folks are going to say I'm doing all this. So I can sit up in the hereafter and look down on a park named after me. Or that I was disappointed in you. Didn't want you to get all that money. But the real reason, Becky, is because I love you. And I want you and some young man to have what I had. Because all the gold in the United States Treasury, and all the harp music in heaven, can't equal what happens between a man and a woman with all that growing together. I can't explain it any better than that. All right, Daddy. Becky. When you're as old as I am, you'll thank me for this. Daddy, I'm full grown. I wasn't worrying about me. I was thinking about you and Mama. Rather late, Becky. It's bedtime. Oh, Mother, mm -hmm. he brought this. He must have intended to use it. Oh, well. Sing I us did. a song. Well, if you really want me to. Gosh, I haven't played in You know just time. right for me. Sure. It's the rage now. Oh. 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 <laughs> Deb, what are you doing? Oh. I, uh, I just thought I'd get another cigar. Well, you've got one in your mouth and two burning in the tray. Not move. <laughs> well, so good, I kind of hate to break this up. But if we're going to have that Indian hearing tomorrow morning, 
Uh, sir, about our conversation earlier this evening, uh, I believe I'd better apologize. Yeah? Yes, sir, I've been thinking it over, and when I called you reactionary, well, that's merely my generation term for your generation. Nothing personal, sir. Oh, really? <laughs> well, uh, good night, sir. Good night, Miss McClendon. Good night, and do come again. Good night, Drago. Night. What does a reactionary mean? Me, I guess. He says that anyone that wanted to sell at a profit was a reactionary. Was well, we reactionaries back in them days when you were selling beef cattle for six cents a pound on the hoof? Well, no use arguing with him. College boy. Morning. If you was my kind of man, you wouldn't let some dude walk off the prettiest girl west of Denver without putting up some kind of fight. Does it show? Well, what can I do? I'm just one of her father's employees. I'm just a hired hand around here. Every so often, Dev, you spill the strangest ideas. Everybody works for somebody. Me, I work for everybody in these United States that steps into a butcher's shop for a T-bone steak. And you work for me. It's not much different. Daddy, the most terrible thing just happened. Junior's horse ran away. The one he rented at the livery stable. You tied up a rented horse by the range. He's probably back in the stall by now. I think we could get Junior something that he can ride. What I'd rather do, Daddy, is drive Junior home in our barouche. It's a lovely evening, and I'm sure Uncle Drago wouldn't mind driving. I would, and I've got the kind of manners. Don't keep me from saying so, just to be polite. I'll drive him home, Mr. McClinic. You don't have to come, Miss Becky. I'll see that he gets home safely. I can take care of myself. You got yourself a foot, didn't you? Dev gets carried. There you go. I'm going with him. Now you've got me wrangling dudes. <laughs> Somebody better help me watch the road. You know, I'm new around here. Might take the wrong turn off. Devlin Warren, you know there isn't a turn off between here and town. You disappear without a trace. To die like this is no disgrace. This is time. This is time. Yeah. Yeah. Devlin Warren, what are you trying to do? Kill us? Better have your friend drive? Yeah! <laughs> Good spanking. Oh, Dev, Daddy. Leave me out of this. 
I think I'll give you what you deserve. You wouldn't dare. Oh, wouldn't I? Ah! You'll stay next time before you have ah! one shot. Don't Miss Kimberly Nelson is gonna help you. Don't you go stay! Wait a second! My daughter? Dad. Oh, you mean you stood there while that brute beat our daughter? G.W., what's happened to you in the last few years? part of Valor, son. Oh, isn't it enough that you've always treated me like a squaw without subjecting dear, sweet Becky to this crude, vulgar Catherine, way of Catherine, you women are always raising hell about one thing when it's something else you're really sore about. Oh. Don't you think it's about time you told me what put the fur under your saddle about me? I don't intend to stand here and hold a midnight conversation with an intoxicated man. And I am not intoxicated. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Chief Puma? Yes, Sergeant. Big McClintock, we know you get us fair judgment. You gentlemen, follow me. Well, the plot thickens. And it keeps going. Now for the Native Americans and their hearing. But uh, we'll take one final break before we get the end of this feature flick. And, uh, of course, Necrosia, what do you have to say about the movie? Delighted, I am sure, as we near the end of our journey with McClintock, let's talk about the themes that make this film truly timeless, family love and social commentary. It's all here wrapped up in a delightful Western package, and that ending, well, I won't spoil it for you, well, thank you very much. So far, we're watching the Duke and one of his great classics, having a good old time, and we're almost to the end. So I guess with no further ado, it's time for us to roll it! Well, Jake, GW... Well, G.W., it's been a long time. Not long enough. Cuthbert. Your husband is a rude man. Yes, Cuthbert, I know. Where are you one day, Indian, Mr. McClintock? Mr. McClintock is not running this hearing. Sergeant, seat those Indians. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, be seated. Now, the whole tribe here want to come into town. Proceed, Lieutenant. This hearing is now in session. Governor Cuthbert Humphreys presiding. Good luck, Daddy. Afraid it's a packed court. Government edict number 826 has ordered that the Comanche Nation be transferred from their present reservation to Fort Sill. It is the government's claim, as filed by Indian agent Agar, that these chiefs, after being released from prison by a kindly government, did then rouse and incite defiance among the tribe against said order. It seems, gentlemen, that although some of these chiefs speak English, Chief Puma is quite at home in our language, they have chosen Mr. McClendon to be their spokesman. I speak for the Comanche. 
Or rather, I offer this translation. Proceed, Mr. McLeod. The Comanches say, we are an old people and a proud people. When the white man first came among us, we were as many as the grass is of the prairie. Now we are few, but we are still proud. For if a man loses his pride in manhood, he is nothing. You tell us now that if we will let you send us away to this place called Fort Sill, you will feed us and care for us. Let us tell you this. It is a Comanche law that no chief ever eats unless first he sees that the pots are full of meat in the lodges of the widows and orphans. It is the Comanche way of life. This that the white man calls charity is a fine thing for widows and orphans, but no warrior can accept it. For if he does, he is no longer a man. And when he is no longer a man, he is nothing. He's better off dead. You say to the Comanche, you are widows and orphans. You are not men. And we, the Comanches, say we would rather be dead. It will not be a remembered fight when you kill us, because we are few now and have few weapons. But we will fight, and we will die Comanche. Thank you, Big McClintock. Am I to gather that Comanche defy the government of the United States? Yes, you may gather that the Comanche defy the United States government, or at least this commission. Gentlemen. Is the order of this court that these chiefs be incarcerated until such time as the detachment of United States cavalry be made available to escort them and the Comanche nation to Fort Sill? This court is adjourned. Oh, McClintock, you are important chief amongst these white people. Sway them. Have them give us few guns to make the fight worthwhile. Let us have one last remembered fight for end of Comanche. I almost wish I could arrange that, Puma. Ahalani Cha. Ahalani Cha. Sergeant. Yes. Let's start. Carry on. Gentlemen. It's sad, these changing times. It isn't the times that are changing, Mama. Car still on the siding? Well, sure, but... Uh, but, but what? Well, I don't like it. You don't, eh? You figure if them Indians get out of there and leave the cavalry on a wild goose chase, that great white father's gonna get nosy. Just nosy, because... and he'll investigate. When they find out how that side saddle governor's been messing things up, they'll give those Indians a fair trial. That's live ammunition in that boxcar. You know what'll happen if them Indians get some guns in their hands? Somebody's gonna get hurt. Is Puma's word good enough for you? Well, I don't... McClinic, you got yourself a partner. Leave me out of it. Hey, McClinic. <laughs> Good night, Bunny. Good night, Governor.
as a lover till I die. Katie, Katie Gilloli, the best home. Katie, Katie, Catherine Gilloli McClinton, where is the woman of the house? Uh, Mr. McClinton. Oh, there you are. Mrs. Warren. Oh, good evening. I waited up for you, Mr. McClinton. Oh, how nice. Yeah, I, uh, I want to talk to you about something. Delighted. Delighted. 309 times straight. I beg your pardon? 309 times straight without a miss. Got to be a record. I suppose so. Now, Mr. McClinton, what I wanted to Two say... pounds decimal, six inch rim, 53 feet in the air. Got to be a record. I'm sure it is, but the reason I wait up... Damn I'm... it, woman, can't you hold that glass still? Uh, of course, sir. Now, down the hatch to my world record. Down the hatch. Yes, sir. <laughs> governor of our territory. The, the governor of the territory, sir? Now, don't you stick up for him, Mrs. Warren. You're a fine woman, Mrs. Warren. But you'll certainly go down in my estimation if you stick up for Cuthbert H. Humphrey, governor of this territory. Don't mean to down change... Down the hatch. Oh. Yes, sir. Down the hatch. Cuthbert H. Humphrey, governor of our territory, is a cow. You know what a cow is, man? A cow is a specimen that is so worthless that you have to cut him out of the herd. Now, if all the people in the world were put in one herd, Cuthbert is the one I would throw my rope at. At whom? At whom I would throw my rope at. Natural born cow. Another touch, ma'am? Oh, no, sir, no. <laughs> I, I don't mind if I do. Good. Can't walk on one leg. Oh, I didn't mean to be vulgar, ma'am. Can't walk one limb. It's all right. Sounds silly. Only a bird can walk on a limb. You know my wife? Her name's Kate. She insists on being called Catherine. Do you know her? Of course, Mr. McClintock, and that's what I wanted to talk Well, about. she thinks that Cuthbert H. Humphrey is panting for her like a bull buffalo at the first green up of spring. But what Cuthbert is panting for is my money. Don't make me feel like I'm drinking alone, ma'am. Very well, Mr. McClintock, if you insist. Down the hatch! Good. Mr. McClintock, I have something very important to say to you. Very important. <laughs> Guess it'll have to wait till the morning. <laughs> Toodle. Goodbye. Bye. Betty, bye bye. This is Warren. Let me assist you. Very kind. Catherine, are you going to believe what you see or what I tell you? Uh, Mrs. McClintock, hope you won't misunderstand. It's the first hundred women sitting on his lap that I misunderstood. Number 101 is quite simple. Now, G.W. McClintock, I... He's gone to sleep. 
just when I know exactly what I want to say to him, he goes to sleep. I waited up to talk to Mr. McClintock. I wanted to tell him I was quitting. You see, Sheriff Lord has asked me to marry him, and... Oh, oh congratulations. I don't want to seem prudish, but if you are going to marry Sheriff Lord, it seems to me that you're sitting on the wrong man's lap. I'll help you upstairs and we have a long talk about men in general. Ladies, one moment. Oh, oh. Watch out, you'll get us all killed. Oh. Wait a minute, ladies, till I catch my breath and I'll get you up those stairs as sure as my name is George Washington McClintock. <laughs> Wallace, Mrs. Ward, but not tomorrow. I want my breakfast in bed. I want to... I know. Toast lightly brown. Somebody sure put a knob on my skull. It's Katie. I'm speaking. Katie, why? And Mrs. Warren was there. Oh. And there you was there. Oh. And there that whiskey bottle was there. Oh. And Katie's temper being what Katie's temper is, well, there you are. Drago, old friend. Huh? My wife does not understand me. Why should you be as different than any other man? Come on, I've got to get you upstairs. Get you ready for that big celebration tomorrow. Why is it? Drago, I am sleeping in the den. John Wayne's arch nemesis stares. consecutive year, it has been my privilege and my pleasure to inaugurate the McClintic Fourth of July celebration. Now, the first event will be the wild horse race. But before I fire this shot to start the event, I would like to say a few modest words regarding my stewardship of this great territory. Come on, get him all lined up. Come here, King. 
Now, boys, you all know the rule. If twice around the inside, once around the outside. First cowboy that hits that finish line without busting that egg is the winner. And I caution you boys about some of them eggs, because some of them eggs are last year's holdovers. seem to be enjoying yourself? Oh, yes. This is wonderful. It's the only thing I really do enjoy about this barbaric country, the Fourth of July celebration. Well, Catherine, I've been here for three days. I haven't heard from you. Is anything wrong? Wrong? Well, I just hope that it hasn't been necessary for you to say anything to uh, G.W. What are you talking about? Well, Catherine, you see, I'm in the... Uh, rather delicate position, being governor of the territory and all. I just hope you haven't found it necessary to say anything about... About what? About you and me. <laughs> Why, you pompous windbag. Do you think that you're the only man who's ever tried to play patty fingers with me? Who's ever tried to lure me into the moonlight? Well, no, but I... Well, I'm a big girl and I can take care of myself. My husband knows it. I can assure you, Governor, that your reputation is untarnished. Now, get out of my way. <laughs> Disqualified. <laughs> oh, here you go, Curly. You'll never believe what happened over there. What? You smell a beer. Well, naturally, I'm drinking beer. Ladies and gentlemen, the next event will be a contest between the two Bronco Busting champions of our territory. Remember the year I rode in that event? Wore your garters to hold up my sleeves? <laughs> we had a bet, and I won it. George Washington McClintock, you are a very crude man. Well, I guess so, but that was a rough horse. Like to jarred my insides loose. <laughs> but it was worth it. <laughs> Three beers! Oh, hey. Nothing busted but my pride. Well, that ought to even things up, Farmer. For what? Well, that sore nose you gave me the other day. Well, that ain't what's sore on him. <laughs> Closing event is the 
that pony race. The finish line is at the barbecue. So start meandering. Come on. Now, what is that, false courage? <laughs> Why, you know a Douglas doesn't ever use a thing like that. I want you to get on that horse, get out in front, and stay out in front. I'll be out in front, that. All the way. Oh, uh, good boy. Now, remember, stay out in front. That Agamemnon's a good horse. A horse, man. Oh, Agamemnon. <laughs> July. Puma finally got his way, but I reckon he's riding out his last war party. Well, he won't get very far. But one thing still has me puzzled. Where did they get the guns? I was wondering the same thing. My kidney's been bothering me. Funny. G.W. <laughs> what an idiotic joke. Joke? Do you think that was a joke? Oh, shut up. Everybody in town to see me. You look good in feathers. <gasps> Deb, I think they've gone. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? What can I do? Nothing. Just like you've always done. How long, G.W.? How long what? Cat, she's been riding the herd on you for two years now. I'm a peaceable man. But my father used to say, you raise your voice, it doesn't do any good. It's time to raise your hand. Well, I've been planning to do something about it all. I'll have another talk with her. Talk to her? Talk to her? Talking won't do any good! <laughs> Becky, have you seen your... What's been happening around here? You've got hay all over you. Been some mighty sneaky goings on here during that raid, Mr. McClintock. Who was it said only a trollop that kiss a man before they were formally engaged? Oh, but we are engaged, sir. You are? That is, with your permission. Well, you've got it. Oh, Mrs. Warren? 
I think it's wonderful. I guess this is the only engagement that ever started off of a spanking. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon Birnbaum is right. All right. Lord bless us, this is going to be a great day. Doggone it, folks. Let's don't let a little old Indian Ray break up a good barbecue and a rodeo. Me oh! down. Let's go. Right. You contestants, get ready for the cow pony race.
coming to the rescue. Oh, pardon me. Ten times without a miss. <laughs> That's a record. All righty then, there you have it. The clink lock. Then let us uh, say goodbye to our friends in the Croatia. Well, thank you very much, and thank you, Pilgrims, for joining us. Until next time, partners, I keep riding into the sun. The sun never sets on those who ride into it. Stop.